Hey everybody, a video today on the Mayans and what it means to be a Mayan. And I think you have to look at that in order to understand their 2012 message. This is alternativenahistria.com and it goes over a book called The World of the Maya. And it just corresponds to many things that I actually believe, what I've read. And it gets down to the real nuts and bolts of what this culture actually stands for and what their 2012 message might mean and I'll give you my version of it. But it says, for one explanation of the Mayan phenomena we can search throughout the world. Maya is a key Hindu philo philosophical term meaning creation of the world and the world of illusion. In Sanskrit, Maya is connected with the concepts of great, measure, mind, and mother. For this reason, it may not surprise us to learn that Maya was the name of Buddha's mother. The Veda text tells us that Maya was the name of a great astronomer and architect. In Egyptian philosophy, the term Maya means universal world order. And it goes on to say this. In breaking down the word Maya, Ma means not, and Ya means pain. The original meaning of the word Maya could be the condition without pain. In other words, awareness without pain. The spirit's presence in the physical body corresponds to a state or time of pain. Our body has physical pain, illness, old age, and incapacitation. The spirit free of the body corresponds to a state without physical pain. Those who master the technique of leaving the physical body of their own will can live a spiritual life without pain. The Maya are not a nationality nor a civilization. They are not the millions of impoverished inhabitants in Mexico or Guatemala. They are not the proud warriors of 2,000 years ago who tirelessly fought with their neighboring cities in the jungles of Mesoamerica. The encyclopedia sketches and description of the heirs of the Maya are misleading. The Mayan civilization has been falsely represented for the last 500 years. It is time for this misconception to be straightened out. The Maya is a state of awareness. It is a life of the spirit which lives in, harm in harmony with the cosmic processes. The Maya is the understanding that the physical body is a transient vehicle which assists in spiritual development. Any one of us can be a Mayan. In fact, this ought to be our aim to attain the Mayan state of consciousness. It says the Maya left their messages and their architectural achievements to be read by generations thousands of years later. Spirituality and science should go hand in hand in order to decode these messages. Geometry is the language of the universe, and the Maya for this reason left their messages in the form of sacred geometry on the walls of their temples and pyramids. And it says this, and this is a very good description of who the Mayans actually were. It says, Ordinary watchmakers repair our watches and put them in accordance with earthly time. It is my theory that the Maya should be considered the watchmakers of the cosmos whose mission it is to adjust, adjust the earthly frequency and bring it into accordance with the vibrations of our sun. Once the earth begins to vibrate in harmony with the sun, information will be able to travel in both directions without limitations. And then we will be able to understand why all ancient peoples worshipped the sun and dedicated their rituals to this. The sun is the source of all life on this planet and the source of all information and knowledge. And with the frequency and harmony, the earth will, via the sun, be connected with the center of our galaxy. These facts become exceptionally important when we realize that we are rapidly approaching the December 21, 2012 date, a date which the Maya have marked as the time of arrival of the galactic energy cluster which will enlighten us all. And much we know about today about the Mayans comes from their codexes. And there is only four known books of the Maya which have managed to endure to this day. Many were burned in the 16th century by the conquistadors. But one of these books that was discovered in Madrid in 1866 is called the Trono Codex. And from this codex, we learn that there was a terrible cataclysm that had destroyed a great island in the Atlantic in ancient past. 
The Codex describes meteors falling onto and destroying this advanced civilization of ancient times. And it goes on to say that the authors of a Codex are specially trained, because according to the Maya, the contents are connected with the heavens. Whoever writes must be in contact with the gods, and therefore the books are a sacred product. And I think this correlates with ancient Egypt, because uh, many of their ancient texts, the Book of the Dead, the Pyramid texts, there appears to be a connection with the heavens also. And they also appear to be a sacred product. And it also says this about this disaster in ancient times. It says, Twice lifted and lowered again into the water, finally one night it sank for good. The volcanic forces shook the water, flooding the dry land in various places. Ten lands in the end sank beneath the water. 8,060 years before the writing of this book. Now it is supposed that Mayan codexes were written 3,500 years ago. Well, with an additional 8,000 plus years prior to the writing of the codex, we would have about 11,500 years ago or so. The time of the sinking of Atlantis, according to Plato and many others, and I did an upload describing the exact cause and date of the Atlantis going down, and it corresponds very well with that. And it just implies that cosmic and natural cataclysms clearly led to the end of this civilization. So, the Mayans did have an understanding of cataclysms and what took out previous civilizations. And I think the whole 2012 warning, they looked ahead by looking back to this time when this ancient civilization, high-tech civilization as some people describe it, went down. And it is said because they fell from grace, their technology got out of hand, they disconnected with Mother Earth and all this, and I think the Mayans simply looked ahead and with their understanding of the cycles of not just time and the heavens, but also of consciousness, they knew that this was going to happen. And since they were brilliant astronomers and mathematicians, they were also brilliant with knowing what people were going to think. And they knew if they put in this vague warning about 2012, they would get us to really think. And I think one of their most important teachings is the earth does not belong to us. We are gifted the earth. And if we disconnected and, and if we disconnect with it, there just might be some consequences, and it all relates to cosmic cycles and human cycles and consciousness and all that. So I believe it is kind of like a big racetrack that cars go around on. And our place and time is the car is going around on this track and we are going down the home stretch getting near the finish line of this current lap and the Mayans have put out a big red blinker saying warning beware the road is going to get bumpy put on your seat belts reevaluate your priorities reconnect with mother earth don't rely on technology so much to get you through. And who knows, they might even, you know, know of some big solar storm that might knock out electricity. And then what will we do? We would really have to connect with Mother Earth. So I believe they knew what they were doing, putting out this warning. They wanted us to think. They wanted us to think in different areas. And I believe they were very successful at it. And to sum up my video, uh, 13moon.com here sums it up very well, and it says this. We all know that we have inherited what our ancestors gave to us, and we know that we are all affecting the world we will give to our future generations. Every moment and every decision counts, especially now in these crossroad times. We must continue to work to manifest the vision of a world where our living earth is honored, where peace is our priority, where the awakening of our human potential and our creative evolution on all levels is nurtured, where all people have wholesome food, clean water, health care, social justice, 
and where the biosphere of Earth is holistically restored and honored, recognizing all beings as part of one family of life. From the humans to the animals, to the trees, to the seas, the bees, the airs, the eagles, the ants, and mountains alike, till one day we even embrace the stars and galactic whole as part of our living community. In this process of shifting world ages, every aspect of human planetary culture needs to be reevaluated and questioned to discern how it can be truly life affirming. From our energy sources to our food supply, to our education and conflict resolutions, etc., etc. That is why we have to be prepared for the long haul of bringing in a new era, participating physically and spiritually, leaving no stone unturned. We are being called to rise to the occasion and become wide shepherds of a fragile new child that will be emerging and growing under our loving care. And it gives one last quote here. It says, Spiritual realization needs to be integrated with social commitment and direct action. No matter whether we like it or not, each of us, inevitably, is a social and political agent whose smallest actions have a direct influence on other people and the world around us. So, I think that summed it up very well. So once again, I'd just like to reiterate, I think the whole 2012 message was done on purpose in it being so vague. I think the Mayans knew that it would get our minds racing, really get us to think, evaluate what is important. And finally, to sum it up, this article says this. Let's look to the actual day of December 21st, 2012 as a grand day of synchronizing with our human family, conscious of this threshold that we are crossing together, a point of no return, a point of celebrating all we have learned while knowing full well there are endless realms of knowledge to meet through all the experiences to come on the other side of the doorway. On the sacred day, let us meet in heart with each other and align with our positive vibrations, opening to feel our unification with each other and with all of life. So that finally sums it up very well. I think this whole 2012 thing is somewhat of a warning, somewhat a message of hope, and it's kind of based on what we all do with it. The Mayans were brilliant, or whoever they got this knowledge from, the beings or gods or whatever you want to call them, they knew how this message would affect us today, and it really has, and I hope we have all taken something positive and real from it. So, I hope you understand the Mayans just a little bit better after this. Hope you thought this was interesting. Have a nice day.